All right, welcome back, everybody, to The Score on this Tuesday. As always, our live look-ins are brought to you by Carol's Carpet Flooring America. Very grateful to have them a part of our program. They bring us our live interviews, locations in both Prattville and Montgomery. It's the most recommended flooring store around, folks. Let's check in with our guy over at Alabama State. He is the newly hired, at least in the last five months, as the Alabama State Associate Athletic Director for Strategic Communications, Fred Sinkton. How you doing there, Fred? What's going on, man? Oh, that's, I'm doing great. Good, good, Chris. Cool morning. Uh, good, good, good to be up and going. Well, I appreciate you getting up with us, man, very, very much. I know that a uh, lot's happening over there. I, I, I love the Q&A that I read online that you've done since you arrived uh, at Alabama State, and, and you're excited about bringing to light a lot of the great things that are happening within that athletic department. Just talk, if you would, generically before we talk specifics about some ideas and plans you have to bring Alabama State and its athletic program more into the uh, more into the limelight, more in, in, under the light for us all to enjoy. Well, we're <clears throat> we're just trying to to you know build on what was built before I got here, and uh, you know I, my hats off to uh, Travis Jerome, who I who I replaced. He uh, you know he started building a lot of things that and putting a lot of things in place. And now my, my charge is to build upon it. Um, we want to uh, start doing a lot of things uh, to, you know, maybe go a little more live at some of our uh, weekly press conferences, uh, things like that. Uh, been able to have access accessible for all our uh, media outlets. Uh, we want to be able to put in place a, a media team that can send out highlights to uh you know, TV stations that, that, you know, cannot be here, you know, everybody's kind of short staffed these days. So uh, one of our goals is to be able to FTP, you know, clips out from football, basketball, all our sports. Love to make that. It accessible uh, to that. I did that when I was at Delta State or my team did that when we were at Delta State. And it was a lot of, a lot of success because we we're on the road and able to provide uh, clips that, you know, people probably wouldn't have said a whole lot about Delta State. And so that's our goal here at Alabama State. We want to be able to be able to at least send some clips to for put together for some quick highlights to help get us mentioned a little bit more, uh, help our local media out a lot more because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of schools around the Montgomery area or within the Montgomery area that that these our outlets try to cover. So uh, we want to try to make it uh, easy for them to put us on their uh, radar to talk about Alabama State and talk about what happened in the game and, and get us more exposure. Fred, you have over 30 years of experience doing this. You've done it. You did it at Delta State for the longest of times, but you've done a lot, done a lot of work with networks, uh, just really making things. So you, your resume is solid as it can possibly be. Uh, and, and obviously that's what attracted Alabama State to, to try to get you there. So with that combination of what you've done in the past plus what technologically is now available to be done, that's a good combination, right? It seems to be changing all the time. I tell you, when I first started in the business, you know, we were uh, – it's just amazing the, the changes that happened. We, I started keeping stats uh, when I was at uh, Jacksonville State. We were doing it in Excel, having to set up all the formulas and everything like that. And now to be able to do things in-game, have things at a snap of the finger within the game's over with, I mean – I'd spend many, a lot of time after a game just trying to get cumulative stats updated when I first started in the business. Now, everything's so instant, and that translates into the social media side. Everybody's wanting things instant. Everybody's wanting to be able to view things. More things are visual rather than red. So uh, we're, we're trying to transition and keep that going uh, through technology here at Alabama State. Fred, let's talk about this football program. We're seeing some highlights now. Uh, I really, really enjoy Eddie Robinson Jr. I just think he is a perfect fit for Alabama State. Uh, I love he's bold. He, he doesn't back down. I think he's a great leader of young men. He's been at the highest of levels. In your five months there on campus, give me your impressions of the Alabama State head football coach. I believe the team went six and five this year, lost a couple of 
one possession games, but get, give me your thoughts on where this football program is with Coach Robinson. I, I think it's headed back up on in the right uh, on the upswing. Eddie's been a uh, Coach Robinson has been a breath of fresh air for this for this athletic program, especially for football. He's energized our fan base. It's just, you know, he's been able to uh, assemble things here. But the thing that I like about his team is they go out and they play hard from the first whistle to the last whistle. He cares about the young men. They, you know, he cares about them academically. Um, we, we got a lot of high academic numbers. With, we had over 221 athletes with a 3.2 uh, GPA this fall, and we have over 215 with – uh, a cumulative GPA of 3.2 uh, or higher uh, or 3.0 or higher. So he's, you know, that's a credit to all our coaches here, but he's been, he's been what this program needed a shot in the arm. He's, he's going out and recruiting. He had, he started developing the young men that were here. He, he, uh, you know, played well with the hand that was dealt six wins is the most wins in seven years here. And that, that puts a lot of excitement that we had, Obviously, the Jackson State game, we sold out. We almost we, we were almost sold out the Florida A&M game, those big games like that. But we, we went over 100,000 in attendance cumulative for the year, and I know that uh, Alabama-Auburn fans, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. That's a one game for a lot of those. But uh, to be able to do that and get people back interested in this program has just been a shot in the arm. He is great to work with. He's a class guy. He, he's, he's one of those guys that's going to get the athletes in here that's going to turn this program back into a top-tier program in the, in the SWAC. Talk if you would. I'm sure you've had discussions with him, and, and we're going to get him on after uh, the recruiting season is over uh, and get him to talk specifically about it. But where does Alabama State fall and – FCS teams with the transfer portal. Is that something that you feel Coach Robinson will be very active in as we approach early signing day? I, I, I think they'll be active. Uh, how active, I don't know. We, we haven't really had that discussion. I know that we're going to sign a handful for early signing day coming up. Um, and, and, you know, I think he's going to kind of see. But you got to really be uh, – be careful in the transfer portal. You want a young man that's going to come in here and represent your program and not be a bad apple. And a lot of, you know, a lot of times it's a second or a last chance for some of these guys, but uh, the transfer, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he will look a hard, look hard at who's in the transfer portal and, and what fits Alabama state's needs and, and try to develop the young get men in here that are going to give us depth and, and play, you know, play every snap and represent Alabama state. Uh, to the fullest, but he, I'm, I know that there's going to be a good mix of, of transfer portal, and, and they're still going to look at some of these young high school kids around here that that are ready to, uh, you know, come out and make this level to the SCS level. So combined effort, obviously, the product that that Coach Robinson puts on the field is one tentacle of it. And then the promotion of that product is falls into your lap to make sure the community is aware of what Alabama State's doing, get Coach Robinson out and about for everybody to hear and see. Literally, I think he's one of the most impressive coaches I've seen and visited with of late. So is that something you two guys talk a lot about to make sure that there is a – your title, strategic communications, there really has to be a strategy about it, doesn't there? There is, and a lot of that lies on the you know social media side, trying to uh, keep us in the in the out in the forefront. Where you know we're you know we talk about uh, different things. He's got a, a media team that's really been good for me. That helps me with highlights and stuff like that. Um, you know, if if you if you talk to him, you, you'd sit there. You wouldn't be thinking you you would not think you're talking to a guy that was. Uh, you know, I played at the highest level. You know, some of those guys can have big egos, um, you know, that are have played at the highest level and they come to this, to, to, to the FCS and coach thinking that, you know, bring their ego. And he, he does not bring that ego to the table. He, he's willing to talk. He's willing to work. Um, and, and I think it's been, it's been a good fit. We, we were, we're adjusting, you know, obviously me arriving in August, it, it, we didn't get a lot of, chance to know each other through the spring but 
uh, I, I think it's going to be a good relationship going forward. He, he's willing to uh, do a lot of things. He, he's not afraid to say, oh, you know, this is this is something we might need to, to you know, not do or something like that. But he's been very accessible to me and to to the media for the most part. And I think I think it's uh, something that that will grow and and uh, help this help his football program out. And you know, I, I think it rolls downhill from from football all the way down. I think all our coaches here. Uh, are going to be successful. Uh, I think, uh, you know, our new basketball coach, Tony Madlock, is is going to be real successful. I'm impressed with him so far. So, uh, and I think, uh, you know, winning winning and putting things up and up in front like we did, six and five is is something that hadn't been done in around, around here in a little bit, a little while. And I think it's going to roll down hit. I think you'll see some success out of all our programs and, and winning kind of breeds and is contagious. And I think that'll help. You know, I think your description of Eddie Robinson Jr. is exactly what I like about him. It, he seems to be down to earth, just a matter of fact guy, no ego, and that make that's a great combination in dealing with the media. And that's why I think you're dead on when you describe what the future is for not just football, but for the entire athletic program. Because as you said, it all kind of feeds from that. Uh, as we transition into talking about basketball, one quick question. Do your basketball teams even know how to get back to the arena? Because, uh, I mean, good heavens alive. I think both have played maybe one home game. Maybe one had a home game. It got canceled, I think. But good heavens alive. I know you got to do what you're doing. I know that's part of the deal. You play a lot of games that maybe help you financially a little bit. You travel a lot. But, man, this team needs to get inside the friendly confines, doesn't it, Fred? Both teams. The men sure do. The, the ladies, uh, the Hornet, the the women's basketball team actually played a home game against Sanford uh, last last uh, last week and, and, and beat them. Beat them one sixty six sixty one, and that was a good win for them. They needed a needed it. Uh, they have been missing one of their top. Uh, they have three players that are that are big scores, and one of them has been missing. And I think she's going to start uh, return after Christmas. But they needed that. I think the the men have really played that tough schedule. I did a note in my notes that. Uh, by the time it's all said and done, they're going to be well over, uh, well over seven thousand miles traveled to start the season. Uh, Carver College, that we were supposed to play in a home game just to kind of get home and have a, a game in between road trips, they canceled their whole season. So, you, what do you do there? So, it's been it's been uh, one of those things. But our our one of the things Coach Madlock has done has been a very similar to Coach Robinson. They play at a high level. They play hard. And uh, I, I think when we get into uh, the Southwestern Athletic Conference play, that it's going to be uh, a whole different story. You play Pac-12 and ACC schools, that's that's kind of taking it to a new level. Uh, when you play Pittsburgh and we're going to play Georgia Tech on Saturday over in Atlanta, played USC out on the West Coast, you know, and, and then you had, uh, you know, some other games in between, not to – discredit Ohio and Duquesne and all those guys, but uh, we actually led Pittsburgh at the half, which gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, hope or a lot of, uh, you know, praise that his kids keep playing hard. It's, and it's a tough, it was a tough beginning of the schedule, but yeah, they're going to, they're going to have to find a, a way to uh, find the new floor in the arena. And when they get back, uh, but rather than uh, finding their way to practice, they're going. It's going to be different to play a home game. Uh, but hopefully, the road, all the road trips at the beginning for these two teams will play dividends down the road when you get into SWAT competition. Because SWAT play is tough on the road. They're high. They're high tense environments. So hopefully, that'll uh, pay dividends when they start going on the road in the SWAT and get into the tournament. Let's talk some about the need to play these games. And I know you can use that as a recruiting tool. We're going to play in California. We're going to play Pitt, you know, out of the ACC. We're going to play a bunch of really good teams, Georgia Tech. Uh, yet, then that's one advantage of it. But there's another advantage because playing those tight teams, Fred, seems to be getting you ready to play SWAC teams. You know, you, you may not win many of them, but you have to be getting better playing that quality, right? Iron sharpens iron. That has to be part of the mentality. 
it is, and I, and I you know, I, I think that's why the, the have a back down from the schedule, battling these teams out west. The the neat thing about the the West Coast swing is the SWAC and the Pac-12 are, are doing a. Uh, uh, to, it's more like a, I guess a get to know series where USC will come here and come towards this way next year as a uh, way to get to know. Uh, uh, put HBCU programs out there and, and let people know about HBCU programs. And it's been uh, one of those things that was set up. We had some other schools play Pac-12 schools. And I think that when you get down to it and you bring a USC towards this way next year, it's going to really, uh, you know, I guess trying to get to know the cultures of both Pac-12 and, the, and HBCU and the SWAC is going to be uh, really good. Is a really good uh, idea between the Pac-12 and, and the SWAC. So uh, I think that that, that trip. Uh, but to get back to your question, yes, it, it's going to make these guys better. They they got to see where they were to start out with, and I think that uh, the the one thing that's going to to help them is this higher level of competition is going to get them to play uh, in in the SWAC at a high level and keep the Alabama and M, you know, Alabama State up to uh, up in that tier that they haven't been in a while. We're going to talk to Tony Madlock, uh, obviously, once we get to the new year, some too here on this television program. He's the new basketball coach. Is there an issue? You've done this a long time, and I did it for a long time too. How does a coach in a program like Alabama State's trying to – refine their their talents getting ready for conference how do you keep the kids you know heads up and, and not get them discouraged by when they're playing some of these teams that are that are you know not mid majors but major majors uh in basketball and and not having a whole bunch of success well i think his staff has been has been really good at that these these young men have kept their head hell high they've had a lot of success like i said they were uh, led Pittsburgh at the half. Things were, uh, you know, really close. It was a really tight game uh, up at North Alabama the other night, and I think that's where you get these young men. They're, they're still playing hard at this point. They know they have a lot of things in front of them. There's still some goals. That all the goals that coach wants to reach are still in front of them, and I think, uh, you know, he reiterates to them that the, this is going to help them. And it's not. And the young men have responded. That he, he's got them playing on a high level. Coach, all our coaches have just done a real fantastic job of keeping their heads up. But they've had some successes. They were. They've. They've been. They've played toe to toe with these teams for a little while, and they've proved they can play. It's just sometimes different circumstances come about, and uh, a like foul trouble or depth might play a problem sometimes, but. Uh, I, th- I think in the end, it, it, he's been able to do a fantastic job of keeping these young men held high and playing hard. Let's shift our, our focus to Frieda Freeman Jackson and the women's program. Uh, boy, she's gotten it done. She's in her, what, 25th year, uh, yep. quarter century. She's been walking the sidelines there uh, at Alabama State. She's taken multiple teams to uh, the NCAA tournament. Uh, give us the prospects there for the women. Well, she, she's she's feeling good about our team. They're, they've had some injuries to start out the year, um, but they're all they're starting to get healthy and at the right time. Towards you know, the, we'll go to holiday break and come back and start January second when we play Mississippi Valley State in a doubleheader here at the Academy. Uh But I I think you know they they were she she explains it last year. She said one of the things that they've been trying to really work hard on is their defensive end. Is the, on the defensive end. They've tried to uh, do that. She said, you know, a rebound here, a rebound there, and they're probably, you know, hosting the SWAC trophy at the tournament last year. So uh, she's really been emphasizing the defensive end. She's got three scores that are uh, – that can that can score. And uh, she calls them her three-headed monster that, that's hopefully going to uh, lift this team – it's not going to be easy. Jackson State's going to be tough. Uh, a lot of those schools are going to be tough. But uh, she is a, she's got the young ladies playing at a high level with with the fact that they beat a Sanford team that had been had been conference champions 
a couple times under their coach since she's arrived. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see when we get in the SWAT play how how they you know how they roll. But hold the whole thing is if you don't win the tournament, you're not in the NCAA tournament. And I think that's their whole goal in front of them. And uh, the defensive end is what, what kind of was the Achilles heel last year, and so they've been trying to improve that. As we wrap up here, man, I, I realized when I was looking into your background, you played on that 87 Troy National title team uh, back in the day with my friend Mike Turk. Uh, that, that's uh, That's got to be fun for you to look back <laughs> on, and you got to be proud of what the Trojans with John Summerall have done this year. I tell you what, it's been neat to be back over in the state of Alabama and been able to kind of keep up with them a little bit more. Didn't hear a whole lot about them over there unless I just went and looked. But, yeah, Coach Turk was a senior when I was a freshman on the team. Matter of fact, he he gave me my my freshman head shave. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see Coach Summerall do good and, and get this program back to where it has been. You know, they had a lot of success under their past coaches, but, I tell you what, just watching some of the things that he's done is, is, and breathe life back into that program has been uh, unbelievable. I watch, I did get to watch the championship game, and right. they, I'm telling you what, that was an impressive game, and hopefully they'll uh, continue that in the Cure Bowl. Man, we appreciate your time today, Fred. It's always a pleasure. Look forward to really connecting uh, with you and your, your coaches and your student athletes as we approach 2023. Thanks so much. Well, I certainly appreciate you having us, and we'll uh, hopefully uh, get a lot more uh, get a lot of more mornings with you. There you go. Let's make it happen. Fred Sington, <laughs> the associate athletic director at Alabama State. We're back with a look at the NBA right after this on the score.